Hi and welcome to this living room, guys. Today I'm wearing blue birds, which means I'm going to be talking about another blue bird, Jet Blue. I recently, just last week, had my first ever flight experience with them. It was an economy class on a 30 hour... 30 hour? No, 30 m minute flight from New York to Boston and back just for the um, JetBlue True Blue points match promotion. If you want to learn about what the JetBlue True Blue points match promotion actually is, check out the description because I wrote an article about my experience on One Mile at a Time, which is my favorite travel blog where I have now become a guest blogger. Before we start, I just want to hear if you guys have ever heard about the game in ooh, Infinite Flight. Um, it's a game that I recently downloaded and I love. This is not sponsored by them, but they reached out to me telling me to check out their app and also asking me if I wanted to be on their latest podcast. Guess what? I said yes. And now I'm on the Flightcast podcast. Uh, it's almost a 45 minute interview with me asking really personal questions. So if you want to get to know me better, check that out in the description below. As I was saying, I just had my, oh, sorry. I just had my first flight experience with JetBlue. They are a low-cost American carrier, low-cost. Um, but I actually had a very good experience with them, better than many full-service carriers. So I thought, why not go through a list of the things that really, really impressed me about my two flights. So as I was saying, on this day, I did a quick round trip to Boston from New York JFK and it was literally a round trip when I say that. I flew to Boston, took the well what ended up being the same aircraft back after its turnaround. So I was in Boston for about 45 minutes and my trip lasted I guess from when I left the ground in New York until when I landed on the ground again in New York to two, two and a half hours. So, the first thing is JetBlue's Terminal 5 at JFK. I was so impressed by how modern everything looked. It was so airy and really, really integrated with JetBlue. Now, I know it's easier to do this when you're an airline that really dominates a terminal, but everything was just so synchronized and the theme of the whole terminal was coherent. I really, really liked it. Um, so then I walk up to the check-in machine, my check-in doesn't work, uh, so it tells me to go see an agent, so I'm like, fine, I go see a check-in agent, and this guy basically tells me that I couldn't check in because my flight was delayed. And what did this mean? Well, since my flight had now been, what he said, an hour and a half delayed, and I was meant to have a 40-minute layover in Boston, I thought I'd missed my flight back from Boston because at that time I didn't know that the same aircraft, exact same one, would be taking me up and taking me back to New York. So I was like, uh-oh. And keep in mind that this morning I had just flown all the way from Europe. I'd got up at 4am European time, flown to New York, and then the first thing I did when I got to the airport was go to Terminal 5 so I could do this JetBlue flight. So I was like, this is a living nightmare because I could have to spend the night in Boston in case I missed the last flight out, if they even wanted to rebook me. And the whole thing seems a little suspicious. You know, I didn't want to... I explained to everyone basically why I was going to Boston and back, but it's still a little weird why someone would book a ticket straight to Boston and straight back with no time at the destination. So he told me that it was delayed. I asked if I could rebook and he said I'd have to go to a service desk. So I go head over in the other part of the terminal um, where he said the service desk would be and the line was like 35 people. I was like, this is great. Luckily, I was a little early to the terminal and to my flight. So I just thought to myself that this isn't too bad. The line could take, you know, 20 minutes maximum and I'd be done. Two minutes later, the same guy who helped me and told me my flight was delayed came running, and this is from the other end of the terminal, came running to me saying, Daniel, Daniel, you know what? I don't want you to wait in this line. There's another help desk on the other side of security where there's no line, where you won't have to wait, and where they'll help you straight away. So he literally left his post on the other side of the terminal, 
ran across, remembered my name, and told me to go through security so I didn't have to wait in this line. That was the first thing when I was like, whoa, I have never experienced such personalized service at an airline before. Once I got through, I spoke to the agent and he actually said for some reason the JetBlue phone agents have more authority than the people in the airport or they had more power to override the system. So I ended up calling them up. This really sweet lady answers and she says, oh, I, uh, I'm so sorry, my computer isn't working so you can hang up and call someone else if you don't want to wait for me but please tell me what your problem is and I'll try to work it out and see what I can do anyway. She sounded so nice, so I was just like, I'll wait with her because she'll probably be really, really helpful. And as it turned out, half an hour later, she had helped me out. In the end, there wasn't much she could do, but she'd called all these different people to try to find uh, any solution for me. And basically, she ended up finding out that the same aircraft would be serving my flight to Boston as the aircraft that would be serving it back. So my problem or crisis was sort of averted and I knew at least that I'd be making it back to New York the same night. At this point I was done. The flight was still delayed but it was being progressively pushed forward so it was even better. I was thinking now I'm gonna get home to New York maybe 45 minutes behind schedule when the flight was originally an hour and a half delayed. Uh, and by the way this was due to a ground stop in Boston. It had nothing to do with JetBlue. So at this point, I just waited at the gate. I eventually boarded because we were ready to go. We pushed back at around 5.40 maybe, which was an hour behind schedule. It took a long taxi out. We were at JFK, so we took off. And f the first thing I noticed was that there was free Wi-Fi, they told me. And I was so impressed by the speed of the Wi-Fi uh, and that it was free for all passengers. It's similar to Norwegian in Europe, and I love that perk. Um, but also keep in mind that JetBlue have an in-flight entertainment system in every seat back on their A320s, A321s, I'm not sure about the Embraer, but that's awesome in itself for a 30 minute flight. So then the service began, and again, this flight was 30 minutes, the crew came out with this tray of drinks presenting all the drink options, they had sodas, they had water, sparkling water, just came out with a tray, all the cans put up beautifully presented and gave everyone an individual can if they wanted to drink. That's, that's, you know, I don't know how much one can cost them, but that's a big investment for a flight that short. Also, the crew came around the cabin with a bag of snacks, a big jet blue bag. It looked like it was Halloween at 35,000 feet all of a sudden. They were coming around with this bag with either potato chips or chocolate chip cookies you could choose from and I had the chocolate chip cookies. I wish I could have tried both. I didn't ask, probably could have. And by the time it was done, it was time to land, so it all just went very fast, and I was very impressed. Then we landed in Boston, and there was a change of crews, so I just walked off the plane, out of the jetway, sat down in a chair by the gate, and waited for the flight back to start boarding. And at this point, all these people were walking up to the desk, because they saw that the flight was delayed, and I think they'd been scheduled on the flight that left about an hour and a half later. And this family of maybe six people came up and were like, hey, are there any seats on this flight? Do you think you could accommodate us earlier? One minute later, the agent had the mall boarding passes on this flight without even saying anything. She just said, here you go, you're welcome. And she did it, you know, there was no resistance. She was so glad to help. And then this ended up happening to maybe, I'm not kidding, 15 passengers or so were walking up and she was just like, I'm glad to help. She did it and there was no fuss. Just really kind and helpful service, similar to what I'd experienced at JFK. So now for the flight back, we boarded, everything went like normal. There was a little delay in pushback, so I think finally we ended up pushing back around 8 o'clock or so which was, again, an hour after schedule, but we ended up landing a little earlier. It was fine. Since I was on board, I was happy. This time I was a little further back. Um, so we took off, and now the flight attendant said the flight time would be 35 minutes. So originally they just said, we have to cut the beverage service, we'll just be serving water, uh, and that's, I mean, that's good in itself for a 30 minute flight. So then, something I have never seen before, there were off-duty flight attendants everywhere, maybe five of them. They all get up, go to the galley, 
and help the flight attendants so they come running through the galley with the full tray of all the beverage choices, give everyone the beverage they want, and make time to serve cookies and chips, which they originally didn't think they'd have time to do. Just because these off-service flight attendants, I guess, enjoyed their job or wanted to provide good service so much that they got out of their seats and helped everyone, which was, again, really impressive to me. One other thing which I really like, I always try to smile at the flight attendants, they're at work, I'm flying, we both want to have a good experience. So I smile, and these guys, when you smile at them, really smile back. So that was another impressive thing, and it just makes you feel very appreciated and welcome. The last thing I wanted to say was that there were several passengers on our flight that had connecting flights in New York, because obviously JFK is a JetBlue hub, and we were delayed, so that was going to cause problems. Well, guess what? The cabin crew came around the cabin looking for the passengers with connections, and then they went up to them saying, we're going to help you make your flight. They're holding it for you. We will make sure you're the very first people off the plane. This was to everyone with connecting flights so that you can run out the jetway and make your flight. And sure enough, once we landed and got to the gate, they said, everyone, please remain seated unless you're flying to Jacksonville and there were a few other cities. Then please hurry out the plane. And everyone respected it. First of all, this video is not paid for or sponsored by JetBlue. I have never spoken to anyone who works at a JetBlue office. This was just my experience. Uh, but this doing this points match trip was an effective promotion for them because I've officially jumped on the JetBlue bandwagon. I can't wait to fly them again soon. And I would really recommend you guys try them as well. But I was just so impressed by the overall feel and by what they offered and maybe I'm having like a, a fad with this. I really hope you guys enjoyed hearing about my JetBlue experience because I certainly enjoyed having that experience. And now there's two little JetBlue flights in my flight diary which look great there and I'm so glad I finally tried them. Uh, if you guys have had good or bad experiences with JetBlue, please leave it in the comments below because I'd love to hear how you've experienced them. And of course, this was only two flights. I just wanted to say what I was really impressed by so I can also remember this as sort of a tab to check off the positive things on my future flights um, with other airlines and with JetBlue. And I can't wait to fly them again. So please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed hearing my story and subscribe because I upload almost daily videos now and of course make sure to follow me on all my other social media for the latest updates and to see when i fly JetBlue next so until i see you guys next time fly safe oops i forgot to mention one of the things that impressed me the most the leg room was the best i've ever had in economy class